start out? You want to start? I'll start. Uh, or we can continue with the music. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Flare, episode 14. I am one of your hosts, James Walter, and with me, as always, the man with no mo- with no handlebar mustache is what I was going to say, but instead I just made a fool of myself, Mr. Chris Garcia. Wow. I was not expecting that. If you guys missed it, I was tweeting James to see if I should do the handlebar mustache tonight. And I didn't see you until he got He didn't respond, so I didn't do it. Maybe next week if he wants me to. So send him your tweets if you want him to have the handlebar mustache. Chris, you had a birthday last week. I did. How was that? Excellent. I think I'll talk about it later on uh, in part two. Well, we'll wait till part two then. Definitely. Do they ever think we would make it this far to episode 14? Episode 14. One more than a baker's dozen. So for all those bakers out there, we beat you. That's how that works, right? Yes. We've been doing this, what, three and, a half, three and a half months? 14 episodes, an episode a week, so yeah. Sure. I think we're just a regular now. We're not new anymore. No. All right, so that being said, let's dive right in. we got some great stories. Again, great stories. this week. Well, I say that every week. We always week. have great stories. We, they're positive. Positive. I got the James' tablet. They're positively great. This is a big tablet, James. It's seven-inch screen. We'll talk about that later, will we? Talk about that. Let's see here. Uh, we've got a guy. Um, his name is Kevin Purs. Anyway, so I'm going to get his name wrong. But um, it says here, almost 40 years after she began teaching, Marilyn Meckham received a surprise from one of her first students, Kevin Purs. The former Missouri teacher who is now 62, recently told the Lincoln Journal uh, Journal Star that Purs called her in January to simply say thanks, and then sent her a note, and guess what was in that note? Um, a coupon for Best Buy. That's a good guess. Let's think a little bit higher. We uh, How about a buy one, get one free at Chipotle? No. No? Nope. Okay. But you're going to be surprised. I think everyone should be surprised. I read the story last week, and I didn't share it until this week. $10,000. $10,000. He says, I enjoyed class so much you gave me, uh, gave your students latitude and respect in return. You were, uh, you were showed with respect uh, and I, and appreciation. He has very bad handwriting. Yeah. I think they, they transcribed some of it below. Okay. Yeah. But, Basically, he just said that she was such a good teacher and she had such a big impact on his life that he wanted to send her some money. And he said, it's not really even about the money. It was more just about, you know, kind of showing his way of saying, hey, thanks for, you know, being there and being a good teacher. Um, I think he said she taught, what, like food, a co-ed food class or mm-hmm. something like that. And um, she said this isn't the first time students have reached out to her, right? So, no. It said this wasn't the first time he's reached out to former teachers. Mm-hmm. Just the first one that we seem to have heard about. Were you homeschooled in first grade? I was homeschooled since the very beginning. Okay. All the way through until college. I was about to ask you if you remember your first grade teacher, but I'm sure I, you I remember my first grade teacher. Loves. Same teacher I had every year for a long time. You love and respect your teacher. I do love and respect <laughs> my teacher. I remember my first grade teacher, but... Would you send her $10,000? No. I, well, maybe. I mean, if I was a millionaire. Maybe. So when you're a millionaire, you can send the weekly flare ten thousand dollars. I will send you individually ten thousand dollars. Even better. Yes. That'd be great. I'll pay off your mortgage. And then we could write, and you could be like, "Thank you for helping me launch our amazing podcast that we started with such a big impact on my life." I started from the very beginning. And then all of our fans will be like, "Hey, what about us? We were here supporting you." And then we can send them all like a lollipop that says, "Thanks for the support." One of the big ones with the big. A big, nice big lollipop. Every dollar donated gets two dollars donated to Weekly Flare. You donate two dollars to the Weekly Flare for every dollar they donate? Yes. So if, if they I, donate five dollars, you'll donate ten dollars? Yes, that's if I'm a millionaire. Well, oh, only if you're a millionaire. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say, whoa, guys, we got to get on this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So ten thousand dollars, awesome. What else could you buy with ten thousand dollars? 
That's a good question. Maybe like an arm of the robot in the next story? Probably. You I might even be able to buy that. How much did the robot, robot cost? I don't think it said. Uh, it did not say how much this <sighs> robot costs. Poor reporting. But we have a robot called Medi. And you know what's funny? Medi! Is Medi is actually spelled a capital M-E-D, lowercase i. And what movie did we just see? Chappie. Chappie with the uh, lowercase i. Lowercase. What does that mean? Um, intelligent. Intelligent? I don't know. Okay. Well. I, it's your story. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just I I'm just breezed through. I didn't. Quickly. I didn't know. I didn't know if you. I don't remember what it was in Ch Chappie. That was just what they called them. There was no reason for the way it was okay. spelled, other than it was just marketing gimmick. Okay. Chappie was just the name that the lady gave her when it came alive. Mm -hmm. She was like, "I'm gonna call you Chappie." Yeah, really annoying. And voice. that's basically how her voice sounded <laughs> the whole movie. Awful. Good movie. Awful. Awful voice. Great movie, but those two actors from that band. We're just not oh. good. Going back to Medi or Medicine back and Engineering. Oh, here we go. You were right. Medicine and Engineering Design Intelligence. So the I, the I does stand for intelligence. Score but one for I want to know why it's lowercase. It's a good because question. Because the emphasis is not on its intelligence, but its medical capabilities. Do you know what they use them for? Um, they use them to walk around the hospital and make sure patients don't escape. No. Oh, it's a good guess. Um, you're, you're they use guys. they use them to help children. Yes, I read the story. <laughs> you're a bad guesser, but it's creative guesser. Visits less painful. He helps make doctors' visits less painful. Alberta Children's Hospital in Canada, Canadian. Aye. Well, this is the first story from Canada, I think. Aye. Of the many robots earlier this year, CTV News reported the bionic friend hangs out with children in the waiting room and also accompanies them during different procedures. According to RX Robot, the group that created him. RX Robot? Yes. That's a cool name. You need to look him up. Maybe see what else they created. I like that name. RX Robot. See, uh, Medi's purpose is to help children cope with pain and reduce their stress. The robot has produced real results according to a study done at the hospital. Kids who interact with Medi Robot reportedly experience 50% less pain during their medical procedures than those who do not. This is funny because I have seen videos mm -hmm. of a doctor mm -hmm. um, giving a boy a shot and he acts really silly and he throws tissues at the boy and the doctor tickles throws him. Yeah. at the boy? Yeah, and he tickles him and all that kind of stuff. And the, and the procedure seems to be going very well. You know, and, and the child cries a little bit, but he, sure. I, this is one of the things that doctors need to do, you know, because I, I like that, you know. Yeah, you got, you got, especially for kids, because otherwise they'll grow up to be like me and be like, I hate going to the doctor. Exactly. But I don't really know why I hate going to the doctor, because I never really went when I was young, except for when I broke my arm. And that was at that point in my life, where I'm like, I remember going, but I don't remember it hurting, because it was in that, like, I remember having a cast, I remember going to the doctor and getting it off. I don't remember breaking my arm. I don't really remember the cast being a pain to have either. So I don't really know why I don't like going to the doctor. But kids in general, you know, they don't like going because, you know, you get shots and needles. And that's just not This cool. is going to, well, yeah, this is going to cause less stress and, for um, parents. They said that, they said that, that Medi has been able to, to improve a child's willingness to work with the medical staff. Which is just great because if you're the doctor trying to, see what's wrong with the kid or get a blood sample or give them a shot. Um, if they're calm and in a good mood, it'll be a lot easier to do whatever the medical procedure, how minor it might be. So how many do they have of these? Um, let's see here. I think it said like four. I think so. I think it said four. Uh, and they're only two feet tall. Two feet tall. Two feet tall robots can uh, ease Canadian patients. kids must be short. They are. are they like that so they're not intimidating? Two feet tall. Possibly. It's right here. It's like two of my arms. That tall at the table. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. He, uh, let's see here. Patients' anxiety about telling stories, playing games with the kids, also programmed to speak several different languages. Well, they're in Canada to be able to speak English and French. And French. And are equipped with facial recognition capabilities. Uh, the robot can interact with children during various types of procedures like blood tests and vaccinations. Like now, now let me ask you this, Chris. Mm -hmm. If you were a child and you were in a hospital mm -hmm. and say you're there and the medical robot walks in and sees your face and you're like, oh, and the doc's like, 
Medi, this is Chris. And you're like, hi, Medi. And, and the robot's like, hello, Chris. And it tells you a story, right? And then it leaves. And then you come back some other day for something else. And Medi happens to walk by and looks at them like, oh, hello, Chris. Would that freak you out as a kid that the robot remembered you and just like saw you and was able to remember who you are? Artificial intelligence will boost one day, I believe. Definitely. But I'm just saying right now, they said it has facial recognition. Yeah. I assume they use it to recognize the patients yeah. and to recognize the doctors. Definitely. So would that freak you out if you were if you well, were a young child in a hospital? If I was a young child, yes. Let me tell you, I think if I was a young child, I think that'd be cool. I'd be like, man, this robot remembered me. Mm -hmm. But I was a strange child and was into stuff like yeah. that. So. I would think it would be kind of weird because I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't. I grew understand. up watching Star Wars where robots knew people and yeah. were like aware of the environment and aware that they were robots and all that. So for me, I'd be like, "Hey, this is cool. I came here a couple weeks ago. This robot remembered me." The, only, the only issue I would fear is I robot. Well, That's you know, as a child, you, you're not aware that robots can like take over. You know, you're just like, "Oh, it's a robot. It's mm -hmm. just cool still, still yeah. like." It's a person, but it's it's a machine, right? You know, you're not aware mm -hmm. of the. If it was back then, yes, but now I think technology has advanced with Siri and all this kind of stuff with recognition. Sure. I, I think for kids nowadays that are going to be seeing this, I think it's more expected. It's more expected, yes, definitely, definitely more expected. But it's still cool nonetheless, definitely. because robots are awesome. He's he's Go really robot. Not, he's really not intimidating. No, he's, he's a very nice he white looks with very red nice. highlights. Mm -hmm. Very non-intimidating, very non-threatening. Until the doctor turns away and he stabs you with that needle too many times. The doctor comes back and is like, what happened? And he's like, I don't know. He wouldn't stop squirming. It's awful. Sorry. Well, what do we always talk about? We either talk about... Space. Space or... Robots. Robots. 3D printed arms. 3D printed arms. But we're going to go to... Skateboards. Oh, wait, no. We've never talked about skateboards. Not yet. No. Robots. I almost talked about GoPros last week. But now I just highlight that battery real quick. We, but we are going to actually talk about donuts in space. Was there any donuts in Star Wars? Um, no. Not the cantina. Not, not at least that were supposed to be donuts. There mm. probably was some in the background somewhere because yeah. they couldn't afford to make random fake foods. I don't know. Never seen a donut. They had these weird crackers that uh, Leia was eating on Endor, and she gave the Wookie half of. That's right. And he was like freaked out about it. And then he's like, mm, mm, mm. Well, okay, so what is, what was it JFK that said it? Said what? One small step for human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, anyways, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna. We're not gonna edit that out. We're letting everyone see. I don't remember what he says. But this one says, one small step for the donut, one giant leap for breakfast pastries. Chris, yes. if you were a donut, would you appreciate being sent to space? That I'm not sure. Me neither. I think if you were a donut, you'd want your purpose to be eaten. So that's kind of the goal of being a donut, is to be the most delicious breakfast pastry in the world. We'll definitely talk about donuts. Which most donuts succeed at doing. Yes. But this donut had a different purpose. Its purpose was for these two guys to send it up to space to be the first donut Recorded in space. Two Swedish. They said it was the first donut in space, but can we be sure that NASA never sent a donut with any of the other astronauts? It's hard to say. That's something we need to. I'm going to say 99% sure it's the first donut in space, but there is that slight chance because NASA sends some stuff into space that's just random. Dogs. Dogs. Monkeys. That was Russia. Toothpaste. Yeah. Well, they need to brush their teeth. Still. True. Have you ever dehydrated ice cream? Yes. But this donut. Let's get back to the donut. Donuts. First of all, have you ever seen Rocket Man? Who was in that? Tim Allen? No. No. It was that one guy who shows up in Dumb and Dumber. He's the cop. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I He's a comedian him. as well. That I need to rewatch because that is a great movie. You want a good comedy? Rocket Man is a great movie. Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest. Great, great movie. Too. Star Wars. That, well, that wasn't really funny. No, but it's amazing. It is a great movie. Donuts. Donuts. Two a great food. Two Swedish brothers send this donut up into space using... You would understand this better than I would. They used a helium balloon, right? Helium balloon. Now, uh, it happened 20 miles above Earth's atmosphere on April 8th. The duo attached cameras to a vessel to capture the pastry's journey to space and, it, uh, and its descent back down our little blue planet. 
Uh, the capture images of the sprinkled conf Infection. confection hovering above Earth's curvature and truly majestic. I want to send something that nobody has done before. That is why we chose a donut. He, uh, Alexander told him. Now, James, would you eat this donut when it came down? Of course. Why? It's still a donut. Well, would you be afraid of... What, space bacteria? Yes. No. It's too cold. Too cold. Let's see here. Uh, the Jonesons? It, the, the O has two little dots on the top of it. So well, it's Swedish. So it's Swedish, so it's got to be Jonesson. I don't know. I don't speak Swedish. I don't either. The Jonesson brothers are by no means astronauts, but rather hobbyists who found a science group called Statoless. 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 They just made a group so they could launch this. Exactly. Thing. They had to come up with a group name. Basically, they literally made this this group company so that they could launch their helium weather balloon to space. This is just... It's cool. It is cool, but they it's just weird. They just sent a donut to space with some cameras and stuff just to say, hey, we sent a donut to space. What now? Um, 20 miles above the Earth. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say that definitely counts as being in space Th this is just random it's so right. random i mean it's not even edible after where they spray painted it and and well it's also broken to pieces yeah enamel paint and glue to glass plank the whole thing took 84 minutes to fly up to the helium weather balloon now why did they paint it does it say um they had to attach it to a gps tracker and a styrofoam box the donut was coated so the paint wasn't necessarily for the sake of the donut it was more so they could track it. yes why didn't they just attach all that to the weather balloon it was in case the donut fell out or something yeah that's weird yeah it's just why didn't they use frosting that way you could still eat it when you were done my this is a great question we've been kicking around with various ideas but the thing is how do you top a donut the king top donuts? donuts two a pizza pizza definitely top it um, um an elephant a croissant Oh, sure, for size. I didn't know we're still sticking with just food. Oh. Uh, yeah. An elephant. You can really? send an elephant up in a helium weather balloon and bring it back down alive. Honestly, you can top anything, or almost top about anything with a donut. I don't, I don't know. Maybe if the donut was on the elephant. And if you brought the elephant back down alive, that'd be impressive. What about a donut hole? Donut holes are... I'm, don't get me started on donut holes. They're not even holes. Why is it called a donut hole? Because it came out of the hole with them, but they don't even make donuts that way. No, they don't punch it out. They don't punch them out. Anyways, we'll get to donuts later on my weekly update. Oh, about your birthday. Yes, Okay. but we'll talk about that. Later. Okay, well, while we're still talking about space, um, we talk about SpaceX. Elon Musk, you know, the guy yes. Tesla. Well, he, his company, rather, had a launch. Um, well, when we're recording this, it's yesterday, but when they're hearing this, it'll be a couple of days ago now. Um, they sent the Falcon 9 up with the C, I think it was like called the CRS-7, or CPS-7, I can't remember, I think it's CRS-7. And they sent it up to space, and, um, you know, gets up there, detaches, so they can send the payload rocket up to the International Space Station to take up like 4,300 pounds of supplies, because they resupply the space station mm -hmm. now, because SpaceX is awesome. And the first stage of the rocket, which takes up into space, detaches, and floats on down to Earth, um, Elon Musk has been trying to get them to land on, a, on basically on a barge in the middle of the ocean to recover the rocket so they can reuse them. Now, he's tried this a few times. We've talked about it on the show a few times. The most recent one that they launched came back down, and there's a video of it on YouTube. We'll link it in the show notes. It's coming down. It's like straight, it's nice and perfect, and right before it touches down, someone catches it, kicks the bottom out from under it. The rocket's actually able to re-center itself straight up, but it's moving, it's still moving too much um, laterally, I guess. And it, it touches down kind of off-center, and it's sitting there for a second, and it falls over, and explodes. So but close. Elon Musk is not discouraged. No, he says we're trying it again. They have another launch scheduled for June, and they're going to try again. Um, this one touched the platform. It was actually landed, and if it hadn't been for that wind, uh, I think they definitely would have had a successful touchdown. Mm -hmm. um, the tricky part is the barge is out in the ocean moving with the waves, and you know yeah. there's wind across the top of the ocean, and uh, it's just tough. That's 
that reminds me. I mean, you've seen movies like Top Gun. I said Top Gun. Yeah, you know, they have to hit that line, you know, just <laughs> right on. So, I mean, it's not an easy task. No, landing on something on the ocean is not easy. I mean, these pilots that fly in these aircraft carriers, it's very difficult when they started they doing have this. To, they have a lot of planes corner. went down when they first started the landing on aircraft carrier programs. It's uh, one of the toughest landings anyone could perform, landing on the aircraft carrier. Probably harder than just a normal water landing, because mm -hmm. at least the water, you know, it's there, and you're going to hit it, and it's going to deform. If you miss an aircraft carrier too low, uh, you're just going to crash. You're going to crash, you're going to go overboard. Or you're going to be too high and just right off the edge and crash into the water. Yes. So, kudos to SpaceX for even getting the touchdown on it. So close. Uh, it was so close. You really need to go watch the video. Um, Have they thought about doing something else? Like I think a net they're or... talking about maybe trying to do it on land. Okay. Which um, is going to be a whole other slew of problems, getting enough land area that you can bring it down with no one around. The ocean's better because it's just big open space. Yeah. You can clear it's out safer. miles and miles of ocean. But um, he's not stopping. SpaceX will figure out a way to recover the first stage of a rocket one way or another. Mm -hmm. They may give up on landing it on the ocean. They might parachute it back down. They probably, they might, I think what they might need to do in the meantime is parachute it down and just have the rocket so that it's uh, resistant to the salt water and just go recover it that way mm -hmm. with like uh, one of those boats they use to salvage wreckage. Mm -hmm. Just scoop it on up that way. Uh, they don't want to do that because they really don't want to have to worry about introducing salt water inside of it and around it, which is really corrosive to that kind of materials. Uh, which is why they want to lean on the barge, because then they don't have to worry about water getting inside of it, just on the outside. I think this barge needs to be more solidified for it to be not moving on the waves. Well, you'd have to have a... I mean, even an aircraft carrier moves a ton. I mean, if you've been on a cruise, if even yeah, a cruise exactly. boat moves a decent amount and they're really deep into the water they have a lot of fins and stuff going on to stabilize them out they can't but drop, unless they the can't water thing and weld something down to the ground no it's i'm sure they're way deep for that you'd have to catch one they're like the, it, it's it'd mm -hmm. be way deep but have you, well you've seen spacex iron, isn't giving up you've seen iron man i've seen iron Man. well you remember when he's just testing his things out and he's run out of gas and so like he hits the gas and then his backup power comes on he hits the gas and then comes out you know, and then yeah. it hits the gas. I mean, that's something they can work on. They can do it that way, you know. I, I said, I think this one, the biggest problem is the wind. They just gotta get yeah. around the wind somehow. The wind, yeah, is a big And no matter big how big of a thing they're landing on, bringing a tube straight down like that, trying to land it upright, um, it's just gonna be hard because the wind's gonna catch the bottom of it and try and kick it out from underneath. Or they need to check the weather, definitely. Because I mean, you've seen previous launches and they've been delayed because of weather well and this launch almost was delayed because they were worried about rain and then uh, when they launched it was clear so it's it's hard but elon musk will figure well, it out you have the you're gonna have the video on the show notes. the video note will be in the show notes um you should check it out it's actually a pretty cool video it's actually really cool to see the way they're trying to do this um it was up and then pulled and then put back up with a clearer version actually so it was good stuff so we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back to talk about the world's biggest phone that's just completely unnecessary we're going to talk about spider-man everyone's neighborhood friendly spider-man we're going to talk about chris's birthday because he really wants to tell you about his birthday and then we're going to play another game of would you rather because we got no feedback about it, so i guess they liked it so don't go away we'll be right back Welcome back, everyone. We're glad that you returned because we would miss you if you didn't. <laughs> oh, I we wouldn't know. <laughs> we wouldn't we, know. That's true. We wouldn't know. Unless, like, you got on YouTube and went into, like, the really deep analytics and tells you to play the average number of minutes people are watching your videos. But if you download the podcast, we would never know if you listened to the whole show or not. Anyways, let's talk about the biggest phone in the world, Chris. How big is the phone? This phone is big. You know the company Huawei? Huawei? Mm. H-U-A-W-E-I? I've never heard of that company. Okay, well they make phones. Well, how big is this screen? That's what, the iPhone 4? Yes. 
I need to get. I believe it was a three and a half inch screen. So this is a three and a half. That's pretty decent. I think that's size. right. Now what, we have an iPhone that so, comes out like a five point seven. Yeah, the iPhone six was five seven or five five something like that. My friend's got a six point two, I think, or a, no five point seven or what's the other note? He's got an off brand note. Okay. But it's still pretty good. So this Huawei company launched a P6 in London, which was its first smart, beautiful device, says Business Wire in London. And today they returned with the latest P series, the Huawei P8 and the Huawei P8 Max. Now that Max, you would think, it's probably the nicer version of this phone. I wouldn't be so sure. This phone, and I'm gonna, I have the specs here, so I don't want to mess this up has a 6.8 inch screen with a large 4,360 milliamp hour battery, which they say will allow you to watch 15 hours of video, surf the web 15 hours, or listen to 60 hours of music, or have two days worth of standby time. The cameras are normal 5 megapixel, 13 megapixels. They have their own little technologies to stabilize it. 4G, blah, blah, blah. Wait, did it say a 6.8 inch screen? 6.8. Do you know how big that is? I'll Let me show you how big this is. This is my Nexus 7 tablet with, ironically, a 7 inch screen, I believe. This is 7 inches. 6.8 inches would be only a little smaller than this. Not the screen, obviously the no, bezel. No, this to this or? No, diagonally. So diagonally corner, diagonally corner, seven inches. There's a 6.8. Now, the bezel, they're saying, is basically bezel. So it's literally the size of the screen. But, well, not literally. It's got to be a little bit of bezel. Otherwise, yeah. you couldn't hold the buttons. But still, nobody needs a phone that big. Have you tried sticking that in your pocket? No, I wear cargo pants, and this goes in my cargo pocket, and it sticks out. I, you couldn't carry this in a jean pocket. No way. You couldn't carry this in even a normal front pocket for, like, um, khaki pants or no. anything. If you're wearing skinny jeans, forget about it. You're going to have to carry this thing on, like, a holster. Maybe get, like, a chest strap for it. You don't want to throw your back out carrying it on one side. I mean, this is insane. This is ridiculous. This takes the whole tablet, phone, the phablet to a new level. You know, Samsung thinks they're funny with the Note, yeah. which is pretty big, but it comes with a stylus and they're trying to market it as the phone that does everything, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Well, a lot, I don't know if you've seen it, but a lot of people on social media have been making fun of, oh, when the iPhone 10 comes out, it's going to be like this big, you know, it's a joke. And I thought, hey, you know, that's, that's kind of funny. You know, it's most likely not going to happen. No. I hope not. It's happening. It's it's kind of sad, actually. My phone that I got, I have a Motorola X, the second gen. Gen 2 Moto X. It's kind of too big. Hmm. I, I It's like a borderline... Like, what is it, like 5.2? It's, yeah, 5. So this is, it's this screen. Here. That's pretty decent size. It's just pretty... I don't know. I like that size screen. I like it's, a five. It's a little too big for me. I like the original Moto X was like perfect, but it fits in your hand properly. Yeah, this one's just a little too big. You can't quite reach all the way across it with your thumb when you're holding mm -hmm. it with one hand. You have to kind of readjust. It fits in my pocket, okay. But like I said, I wear cargo pants, so my, even my normal pockets are mm -hmm. bigger than most pockets on other pants. Mm -hmm. I intentionally buy my dress pants with deeper pockets. Mm -hmm. For the same reason, I carry my phone in my front pocket with my wallet, so mm. I need bigger pockets. Well, we're looking. At iPhone four is too small. iPhone five. We're iPhone looking. Four wasn't a bad size, no. but the iPhone five I think is a decent, hit the right perfect. mark. iPhone six, a little too big, and then you got the too iPhone big. six plus. Too big. The Gal, the Samsung Galaxy S five, nope. the S six. They're just too big. I don't want my phone to be inconvenient to carry it in my pocket. It's getting very Where I carry it 90% of the time. Half of it's bragging. The other 10% of the time is when it's sitting on my desk at work mm -hmm. or when I'm sleeping and it's on my nightstand. I can see this phone as being a work phone, where, but a personal, not really. It's like bragging. I rights. wouldn't even want that for my work phone because I would never take it anywhere. I just. It's it's, all, it's too big. It's all bragging. I'm like, look at how big my phone is. Look at how much money I have. Right, it's like just, wearing the biggest necklace. I don't understand it. You know what I do understand? What's that? Spider-Man finally being in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Really? Really? There's this is kind of that, old. That's a, very, that's a very funny joke that he's always been out. 
Right. He's always been out because Sony owned them, owned mm -hmm. the movie rights to Spider-Man. That's back from the days when Marvel was its own thing before Disney owned them. Mm -hmm. And they licensed out the movie rights for all their characters because they just didn't have the money mm -hmm. and um, the, the resources to do it. Disney bought and made Marvel Studios, brought in some amazing uh, directors, writers, producers. Uh, basically, were able to reacquire all their um, lice, all their IPs, except for Spider-Man. Well, Sony finally said, hey, what if we make a deal with Marvel and say, you know, we'll keep some of the rights, you keep some of the rights, we'll work together here, both make some money. Marvel's like, we don't really need the money, we just want Spider-Man back. So they said, sure, Sony, we'll do it. They want to show that you can basically still make a good Spider-Man movie. I think that news came out last week sometime. Okay. Anyways, recently Robert Downey Jr., also known as Iron Man, said that they're really excited to bring Spider-Man back. He did say that they think Spider-Man's been handled really well, mm -hmm. you know, on screen, which I think was mostly just to save face. Because most of the fans don't think that Spider-Man's been represented very well on screen. No. Um, you know, some people like the original three Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire for different reasons. Um, same thing with the, the Amazing Spider-Man movies with Andrew Garfield. Um, they each had high points and plenty of low points. But I don't think I'd say any of the Spider-Man fans or Marvel fans in general, even superhero fans in general, uh, were really happy with the way he was handled. Except no. for those who just only watch the movies. Anyone who's watched the cartoons or write comics or basically interacted with superheroes in any way other than the movies have not been very happy with yes. the way Spider-Man's been handled. High points here and there, but the overall tone has been like, Spider-Man, Sony, you've done a bad job with them. Sorry, Sony, but you kind of have. Yeah. And so now, uh, Robert Downey Jr. has kind of confirmed that they're going to take a more teen look. So he's going to be more like a teenager, which is how he was in the comics. He'll be kind of more witty which is how it was in the comics. Basically, uh, he's going to be more like what the fans of anything outside the movie want Spider-Man to be. I'm excited. Are you excited? I think this is a pretty good thing. I wouldn't go as far as saying that Marvel isn't is don't care about the money. They don't care about the money. I, I said they don't need the money. Well, different. there was a dispute with... I used to work in a movie theater. I mm -hmm. don't know if this was Marvel or what, but we almost did not play Iron Man 3. Um, that being said, they were wanting us, or Regal, and some other um, places to be charging about $15 a ticket. Um, and so we almost said, no, we're not going to be doing that. And then we came to an agreement, and they said, you know, you can sell them for the price that they are for the movies. So there's always been that kind of dispute. I don't yeah, know but I think that. that's something, but that's probably more this, the, the movie the studio. studios. Which, okay. I mean, Marvel Studios is, is the studio, but it's probably more of a push from Disney. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't need the money either? Yeah. They're just pushing the envelope to see what they can do. See how much they can get. I really don't think Marvel's hurting for cash right definitely now. Definitely not. They've had And if they are, Disney success. definitely is not. Like, it's success behind Pixar and and Disney Frozen. and everything. Just Frozen everything. alone, I think Disney's good for like the next 10 years. Most likely. They're still selling stuff off the shelf, it's which ridiculous. I care less. Ridiculous. And then you got movies like Home that were just nice and enjoyable and they get terrible ratings because they just don't have that Disney no. something that people want in animated movies. I just don't get it. It's not magical. This isn't about Disney. This is about Spider-Man being part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yes. Which we are excited for here yes. at the Weekly Flare. Rachel's not excited about it. Our producer, Rachel, she is not excited. She liked Andrew Garfield. She's very mm. upset. Did you see his hair? Come on now. She favorite, likes his hair. Fa favorite Disney movie? Aladdin. Is that even a question? Favorite Disney movie? Lion King. Up. <laughs> See, I don't really classify, even though I know Disney owns Pixar yes. now, I know they own them now, and they owned them when Up came out. I just, I have a hard time saying Disney Pixar. is. You know what I mean? It's, it's Disney Pixar, so it's not Disney. And so uh, I always go Disney as like an actual just Disney only. Okay. Because otherwise, how do you say Toy Story wasn't the best? Toy Story is. Or Monsters right. Inc. Or The Incredible. Like, Aren't they kind of like going to be coming out with Toy Story 4? Uh, I don't know. I heard The Incredibles 2 is a thing. Yes, we, we talked about, talked that, about that, that like three different times, and we are very happy about it. Again, producer Rachel, producer Rachel not Rachel happy. Now. I have a feeling Rachel does not like a lot of the same movies we like Star Wars. Star Wars. She doesn't like it. 
Incredibles. Incredibles. Didn't like it. Up. Never seen it. Oh, what? man. Movie night. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we don't got time for this. Nope. All right, Chris. <laughs> We've gone on enough about Spider-Man. How was your birthday? My birthday is great. Is great. Was. It's still it's going still on. going on. Birthday I don't feel... A week-long birthday party, huh? Yes. Was 22 that big of a deal? Yes. You and Taylor Swift. Yes, I am feeling 22. Good. And I knew how bad you wanted to say that. I did. Oh my gosh. I could have worked it in better, but I was just too excited. And you were way too excited for my birthday. I was too excited for being 22. Or Taylor Swift. No comment. No comment. I am now 22 years old. I am happily single, still. That's what depressed people say. <laughs> I'm still single. I mean, people who are depressed about being single, not depressed <laughs> people. I should clarify that. Yeah. Don't want any hate. I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay being single. But I am 22. So Getting yeah. up there. Yeah, I am getting up there. I need to find someone soon. So That's not what I'm saying. I was just saying you're getting up there. Oh. Stay single as long as you want to. No True. rush. True. You have your whole life. I do. That's right. I get married when I was 25. That's still pretty good. Yeah. I always thought I was going to get married before you. Yeah. I did too, but you know. Things happen. Things happen. <laughs> but where did I go this weekend? I went to Wilmington, North Carolina. Wilmington? Over by the coast. Why did you go to Wilmington? Because my parents were very busy this weekend and I really didn't want to stay home. So I decided to take a road trip to see uh, episode nine. Hi, Abby. Abby. With a walk with an E. No. Not an I E. <laughs> That's an E. Oh, true. I can't spell. But... We had a great time. We went. Um, we actually went to the place, and we're going to talk. To you Tell me about the donut place. About the donut place. Tell me about the donuts. We have a place called Brits Donuts over near Carolina, the Carolina coast. It is. Is it run by Brits? No, no, actually, it's run by an old lady and her posse. Her I guess. posse. Young posse. He did. He do it right. He fly. Oh, sorry. It was an old sketch I heard oh. on the radio about P Diddy <laughs> and an entourage and flying oh to the gosh. beach. But this place was established in, I think, 1937 or 1939. She's One old. of those two. But this place is amazing. They only make original donuts. I do not know how they make them. Yeah. They only taste good when they're really hot. Well, that's every donut. True. Okay, that's not true. But, donuts always taste good. But these are amazing. They're, they're just absolutely amazing. I'm not going to How lie. amazing are these donuts? I had three, almost four. Three, almost four? Yes. What, do you like half of it and change your mind? No, I had three, and they're like, you want another one? I said I should, but I shouldn't. So someone else ate them. Wait, it was your birthday. True. Why did you not just eat them? April 10th. It was April 10th. Because they're that good, and they were that rich, that it was just rich, richifying. It was just right was in the face. Yes, they were right in the face. Powed me right in the face. I don't so. think richifying is a word. Nor does it make sense in this context. It's going to be. I'm using it. It's very rich. It was very good. So that was my Friday night. That's good. Yes. And what then, did I do Friday night? Did you watch a movie? I don't remember. Wow. Getting old, man. I don't, Forgetting things. I really... What did we do Friday night? I think we just stayed home. I don't exactly. think we did anything. Not bad. I, but I, I mean, I introduced Abby and her roommate to Bob's Burgers. Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob's Burgers. Hey, Bob. How you doing, Bob? Have you seen that movie or the show? No. It's a great show for anyone that's my age. But did you see the SNL sketch? And that'd be a uh, Baker's dozen, Bob. Da Bears. <laughs> great, Chris Farley, <laughs> definitely. So, do you remember what you did Saturday? Because I do. You remember what I did on Saturday? No. What? No one cares because it was my birthday on Saturday. What did I do so on Saturday? Like... <laughs> I don't. Anyway, I went. I went go karting on Saturday. For really? everybody's bachelor party. Who? Carl. Who? Carl. He's marrying Latara. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the the one I'm filming their wedding for. Yes, the wedding you're filming. My bad. Sorry, Carl. I'll just remember to get that camera for you, too. True. But, Saturday, I was up about 9 o'clock, and we were in the drive-thru for Bojangles for about 30 minutes. It's bow time! And then we ran over to Fort Fisher and did some Why hiking. Why didn't you drive? We did you said you ran over. I didn't run over anybody. No, you we, said you we, ran we, over to <laughs> Fort Fisher. Why don't you just drive to Fort Fisher? We drove to Fort Fisher. We parked and we did some hiking on um, this rock thing that goes, it kind of like blocks in the marina. Okay. We didn't get very far because it was raining and very slippery. 
Um, and then we got back and we went to the beach and laid out for a little bit. It was a little. I thought they said it was raining. Um, it wasn't really raining all that much, kind of a little bit, and then it slowed down. That's why you're so tan. Yeah, definitely, very tan. And then I thought it was just the lighting. No, <laughs> Rachel's umbrella can um, umbrella lights. That's right. Our studio has professional studio. lighting. Yes, pro photo studio. Pro lighting, a pro camera, and the amateur host. But uh, lay down on the beach. Cool. Um, threw sand at birds. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, we went to an aquarium. So if you've ever gone to the aquarium at Fort Fisher. Nope. Been to the one at Myrtle Beach, though. Is that any good? Oh, yeah. This one was actually pretty good, too. They had actually had a, a tank where divers went in. They, he had a microphone in his breathing apparatus. Oh, that's good. Cover your mouth while you talk. It's an open <laughs> area. <laughs> breathing apparatus. And he talked about the different fish. You know, there's about 250 different this species. This one has two fins. <laughs> this one has two fins. <laughs> He talked, there's sharks in there, there's stingrays, there's fish, a sea turtle, my favorite, you know. What's up, man? Finn. Whoa. Noggin. That's cool, man. <laughs> but yeah, it was pretty cool. Good. And then uh, went to Mellow Mushroom, which is a great pizza place. Mellow Mushroom is delicious. And watched uh, World War Z. Great movie. Yes. Now, if again, you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. We won't spoil it for you. Um, nope. Two years. Can't spoil it yet. Nope. Gotta go another year and some months before it hits that three year mark. Yes. And where I can comfortably talk about everything that happened in the movie. Yes. Abby, unfortunately, has not seen a scary movie, so this was a good, ah, this was a good start. PG-13, right? Yeah. Well, we watched the unrated. So oh, you watched the hard. unrated. But this one, uh, is a good starting the movie. The unrated was very different. Than oh, it was. There was a lot of extra stuff mm -hmm. they added that you were like, I don't remember. Oh, it's the Ooh, unrated. It's yeah, I go, they're getting cut away. Oh. Oh, nope. They did not cut away. I think it's a good movie to start people off because it wasn't really that scary. The rated PG-13 yeah, version, exactly. probably, though. It was, I mean, it's not like a lot of stuff popping out at you. You knew what was coming. No, no, no. It was not that kind of a no. movie at all. So it was a good movie it to start It was more around. of a thinking zombie movie. Mm -hmm. Zombies it was movie. good. It was a zombie movie from the, the, not the side of fighting the zombies necessarily or trying to kill all the zombies. But surviving. But trying to figure out how to survive and how... Outwit, I guess, trying to stealth the zombies. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't want to spoil it, but I think we can say the plot was kind of like the guy was tasked with finding out how the outbreak started um, so that they could figure out how to defeat it, basically. Same thing with I Am Legend. Um, well, I Am Legend, he knew how it started. It was his thing he was working uh, on to stop cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, spoiler, but the movie's like seven years old. So. True. Great movie. You know our theory, three years and it's free game. I think that's a fair theory, by fair the theory. way. Isaac and Brinson might disagree. If you disagree with my three-year theories, let us know, because I'll consider changing it for the crowd, for the viewers. What do they say? It's only one year. Uh, I won't probably go less than three, but if you think three is not long enough, I'll consider changing it for the show. Let us know. Um, well, good. I'm glad you enjoyed. Oh, man, we're going to have to start doing movie reviews on Grapes of Wrath or something from 1954. Grapes of Wrath. Well, Chris, would you rather do movie reviews on Grapes of Wrath or not be able to talk about them at all? I'd rather play Would You Rather. Okay. Well, let's play Would You Rather. We're going to play Would You Rather. Would You Rather. We're going to switch it up a little bit. This time I'm asking the questions. Chris is answering. He hasn't seen these, except for the couple I read because they were just so funny. So, here we go. Chris. These are on rrrather.com. If you would like to know the source of our Would You Rather today. Are you sure it's R-R Rather or is it Rather? It's .com. I don't know. Anyways, these are user submitted Would You Rather questions that are then voted on. And these are the most voted on. How are we doing on time? Got some like five, ten minutes left. All right, Chris. Yes. Would you rather go way back in time and meet your ancestors pre-1800s? Or go way into the future and meet your great grandchildren post twenty two hundred. Uh, I would like to go to the future. Go to the future. Yes. Why? Uh, because I would kind of gather what was back then, but I would not know what's in the future. So I'd like to also see the future and meet the people and experience their life because we already kind of know history and what was back then, but we do not know. That's right. But we can coming. simulate. We have places you can go to simulate the past if you want to live like mm -hmm. the 1800s, exactly. or 1700s. Also, Chris, 
why don't you just use my answer from last week up because someone will have invented a time machine so you could come backwards. Exactly. In case it breaks. I'll tell you. It that. was basically a spin on you asked but you asked me if you can only go one direction and not come back. Mm -hmm. I said I'd go in the future because then I could just you're in a new time machine to come backwards. Anyways. Chris, would you rather have no one show up to your wedding or your funeral? Oh man. Um I would rather have no one show up to my funeral. Why? Because I wouldn't be alive. Because you're dead. Because I'm dead. And I really want people to live life um, and not have to worry about That's me. That's right. If you're dead, I mean, come on. You're dead. Put the body in the ground. Let's get it on. I mean, I don't know. I'm still torn about how my funeral. I, I think I might put in my will no funeral. I haven't decided yet. It's just, it seems like an awful waste of money to have this big ceremony for someone who's dead. I'm trying to ignore your comments, but all the laughing is making it very difficult. All right, Chris, this was submitted by user Spank. <laughs> Getting real now here. Chris, would you rather find true love or $10 million? That's a difficult one. Now, Chris, this picture of true love... Does this simulate true love to you? No. Nope, me neither. That based on these love. pictures, I'm going with $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> if it's based strictly on it, the picture, is that's representative of true love. Um, do you want the... I want like, your honest answer. Because I can give it two different answers. We want to know you, Chris. I think I can. But who are you? Well, if you want to be, like, emotional about it, I mean, like, true love, no, 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 but because... Chris, who are you? I don't know. I can't answer this one honestly, because, like, if you find true love, then you don't need $10 million to be satisfied. You know, Chris, you have Chris. that one person. You can be poor with that person. But what would you rather? I don't know. <laughs> okay, fine. I would rather... I would have both. Chris, would you rather be able to fly or read mine? Um, most likely read minds. Really? That's I, like the best thing because like no one will know that you can read minds and you can actually see what everyone's thinking. Kind of creepy. Probably stalkerish even. What about you? Ah, uh, fly. I think we've been over me I think so. many times. I'm going to read minds. All right. Let's do a couple more here. Chris. Would you rather live in Harry Potter's world or live the life of fame and wealth? Um, probably fame and wealth. I've seen Harry Potter and, I mean, I'm not like a fanatic about it. No. So, I mean, I'll watch it. I've only seen four out of the eight. But, yes. I mean, it's not like I'm a fanatic. I would, I would really consider, I would rather fame and fortune. I think fame and wealth would probably be a little bit more... Uh, Exhilarating? No, like usable. Yeah. I don't know if living at Hogsworth with all the creepy stuff that goes on there, the movies is an indication of how that universe exists. I'd rather not have any part in that nonsense. No. The only reason I would love to live in Harry Potter world is to have an owl. That's about it. That would be cool. All right, one more, Chris, and then we can wrap it up here. Would you rather... Get a dream vacation for two weeks, or spend five days with anyone in the world, but you must stay in your hometown. Uh, two week vacation. Two week vacation. Why? Um, because I don't really idolize anybody or any anyone, you know. So I could care less who I hang out with. You know, I would like I like to travel. I like adventure. I like to go out and experience something. You know, something new. Something like I said, new. I went to Wilmington. For two days, and I felt like I was on vacation. But you've been to Wilmington before. Yeah, but it's not here. That's true. It's not so. here. All right. Well, there you go. Now you know a little bit more about Chris. If you like the Would You Rather's as a nice way to kind of get to know us, let us know. If you think it's the most irritating part of the show and we should never do it again, let us know. Why are you going to ask us Would You Rather? Or if you have great questions for us, as let us know. We'll answer your questions on air. If they're clean. Well, I mean, you know, we're not going to answer anything inappropriate. We're not about that here at the Weekly Flare. 
Um, there's plenty of other podcasts I'm sure that will cover that for you if that's what you're into. That's not what we're into here. But otherwise, send us your questions. We'll answer them on air. Send us your user feedback. Your user feedback. Your viewer feedback. Can you, is it a user? I don't know. Viewer. I would say viewer. Send us your feedback. Listener. Your listener feedback on iTunes. Give us the ratings, the reviews. We would really appreciate it. I want to see who, what you guys prefer. Do you re- prefer video or audio? Yeah, let us know if you're liking the YouTube. We're thinking about maybe changing it up a little bit the way we're putting the YouTube up. Mixing it up. Cutting the episodes into chunks. So I kind of do like sections instead of the okay. whole thing at once. Oh, you know, let us know what you want to see on the YouTube. If you like having the episode all at once, if you'd rather be kind of broken up, let us know. It's like my life, all broken up. And then you can be like Chris. Also, ladies, if you're looking for a date this summer, Chris is happily single. He likes adventures, and he likes donuts and going to the beach. So send him a send him a tweet. Send him a tweet. Chris, where can they find you on Twitter? It's uh, never lose heart. That is all one word. N e v e r l o s e. H-E-A-R-T. For those of you watching the video, it's right down there. It is right there. All right, Chris, where can they find the Weekly Flare? The Weekly Flare can be found at the Weekly Flare. At the Weekly Flare? At the Weekly Flare. Weeklyflare.com. Instagram is Weekly Flare, which is what he runs. I actually run the Weekly Flare. Mm -hmm. He is the Weekly Flare. Basically, I run all the Weekly Flare social interactions for the time being because it's just worked out that way. Mm -hmm. There's really no reason other than that's just the way it is right now. So if you like that, let me know. If you'd rather see Chris running the Weekly Flare for a little bit, let us know. And we'll give him the social media accounts to take care of. Please donate your money. We will buy a beautiful banner for up here. That's right. We're on Patreon.com now. Good. If you want to donate some money. You can donate some Amiibos for James. We'll give you a whole section on the website just with all the thank yous for people who donate money. If you're into that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. We're not asking you, but you know, if you want to do it, it's there. Um, we'll clean the dust off the Amiibos and put a nice case around them. Yes. I would also, if you have any movies that you'd like us to check out and review, send us some reviews. Or That's send right. Send us some movies to review. If you want us to review video games, forget about it. Go check out Combo Starters instead because that's all they do. And, uh, if you want to keep up with me, you can find me on Twitter at James Walter. But mostly I just retweet. Stuff that I post from the Weekly Flare because we're trying to get that out there. But, you know, on the weekends I do post more stuff that's not on the Weekly Flare. Mm-hmm. You like sharing his pancakes. I do. I shared pancakes. Tonight I shared a picture of pizza. I saw that. It was a delicious pizza, but it had a lot of stuff on it. Um, and, yeah, so that's all. Send us your feedback. Go to theweeklyflare.com. Find us on there. Everything we talked about is going to be there. All the show notes, the video, the podcast, it's all there. And we'll see you again in seven days. Take it easy. Peace.